Okay, and we start. So if this is your first time on Ustream, the way I normally do it is through um, answering questions on Skype, which is Lisa Cairns 12 and you can send me a friend request now. It normally takes about half an hour. I'll put it into the chat on Ustream. It's Lisa Cairns 12. Lisa Cairns 12. Um, uh, and the best way is to phone in but I'm also open to taking written questions um, and when you call uh, I might just put you on silence at first so you might try speaking but there won't be any reply I'll just carry on answering the question that I'm answering so just call and I'll put you on silence and then I'll unsilence you when I'm ready. Um, I've just got mango stuck in my tooth. <laughs> what a great way to start, Lisa. Um, so, uh, there's already two people on Skype. Hi guys on Skype. Just give me a moment, let me do the introduction and then I'll get to you. I'll go to Lawrence first. Um, and uh, you can also email me a question beforehand if you like, which is my email address, and I'll read those out if I get time. Try to get time. Uh, <laughs> So if you're on Skype now, I've got three people on Skype, make sure your video is turned off. And when I'm speaking to uh, one of the other people on Skype, be aware that um, we can hear everything you do, so it's best to turn your mic off while I'm speaking to the other people on Skype. Otherwise you can hear every time you fart, or burp, or type. Um. So what could I possibly say to you about this um, subject? What could possibly be said? It's a really crazy subject. <laughs> if you want a better life, if you want a better story, this really isn't the subject for you. If you want a better story, go and heal your past traumas or try and change your conditioning. This isn't the message for you. If you could really comprehend what I'm talking about, you wouldn't want this. <laughs> I'm talking about the end of who you think you are, a death of something. And yes, it's absolute freedom, but it's the absolute death of that game that was being played before. You lose yourself, and some people are like, oh, that's such a romantic idea. But it's full on. You lose yourself. And all the games that human play have no interest into you anymore. In interest for you anymore. There's nothing left. There's nothing. Just everything. But the human's always in thing, subject, object. Hey Stan. This message isn't about you striving to get this. Everything else in your life has been about you getting it. You've worked hard to get it. And if you're a successful person that's got lots of things and done lots of things, this is going to be so frustrating because it's not about you getting this. It's the death of that you, which has got nothing to, to do with you meditating or working to get to this. It's got nothing to do with that. It's the death of you. So who would be the one that gets there? Who's the one that has meditated and got there? Who's the one that's been through a process and got there? 
who's the one that's unlocked itself or become love or freedom. I'm not talking about any of that. There can be many lots, many states in awakening. There can be many great experiences and thoughts coming up going, I am freedom. I'm going to free everyone else now. Or, I am love and light. I will show everyone else now. Who? Who do you think you are? Okay, hi guys on Skype. I'll talk to Lawrence first. He was the first one to call in. Well, he's not there anymore. Hi, Lisa. Hey, Lawrence. Uh, let me um, mute the uh, the video. Yeah, yeah. And remember, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be out of time for it, so you can't watch my face to see my. I facial. know. I, I noticed that. It's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really slow, but I think it's like a minute sometimes. Yeah, it's it's um, well, it's okay. Um, yeah. So I just I just discovered your uh, broadcast last week. And, and immediately, I've sort of been uh, ping-ponging around for, for a while, and I noticed that the um, as soon as this sort of me energy is, um, you know, exposed to the, to the energy of liberation, it's agonizing. Yeah, it can be. You know, it's, it's just absolutely exposes exposes the um, the whatever you know we're calling this uh, illusion of me yeah. and, and 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 it's as as you're talking yeah it's true it's it's kind of like being in a between a rock and a hard place isn't it when when the conditioning arises though it seems it seems it seems for me like it kind of impossible not to deal with it, you know, not to at least to look at it. Yeah. You know, and, in the, and, in, and, in, and in the looking at it, it seems to dissolve, you know? Yeah. And, and there seems to be a, 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 a process of peeling the onion. And then, and then actually, it's at the same time, it seems like nothing's happening. Yeah. You know, nothing's happening at all. So, I don't, I don't understand it. I don't, I, I don't, un I don't understand it either. Like right? ultimately, everything that I say is nonsense because I really don't understand how or what's happening. But the one thing that I can see it say is that when that energy's crumbled, it was seen to be never happening, and there was never anyone going through a process. But it can seem like that's what's happening Well, that energy is still bubbling up. But then when you're making your cup of tea or when you're walking across the room to sit down, there's no process, there's no peeling an onion, there's no anything, there's just walking across the room. And that's what's being talked about here. But the thing is, is you can't ever remember that. You only remember yourself being there. You can't remember your absence. Oh, oh, oh. But, but the thing is, is that's what it seems like. And when the conditioning comes up, so if there's difficult conditioning, so say if you're conditioned to be afraid of wood and your house is made of wood or something, then the me, of course, the me energy is going to try and get over that and try and relax that. But that doesn't have to go, the conditioning, when the me energy collapses. 
it can carry on but it's not uncomfortable when the me energy collapses it's just that's the way it is but when the me energy is there it's very uncomfortable some of the conditioning and so of course it's going to try and make it better and that's the obvious thing it would be a bit um a bit uh what's that when you're destructive self-destructive if you didn't try and get over being afraid of wood and you lived in a wooden house or something but when that energy collapses there's no care of things that are happening it's just things happening there's nobody there to care but that but when the me energy is there condition certain conditionings of the body mind mechanism are unbearable to live with so of course it's going to sort them out and relax them yeah. Also, when the reason why I think that that it becomes so uncomfortable when it begins to get exposed to me energy, this is just going into stories, is because the energy is still going into the future and trying to fix things and still going into the past. But there's another part of that person that knows it's all hopeless. So it right. kind of can't get any relief from hoping to have a better future or anything. So it's kind of stuck in this very uncomfortable world where the energy is kind of going to try and make things better and the energy is going forward and then there's another part that knows it's hopeless and that seems to be happen for most body mind mechanisms that that or for most me energies that they go through that and it becomes quite uncomfortable and that seems to be the way of it well, there seems to be like a it's not si simply that clear because sometimes there's there doesn't seem to be anyone here. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, a lot of the time, and, a lot of the time. And, 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 and there was a kind of a big event where, where the, the entire structure collapsed and, and, and the aliveness opened up and, and expanded and that's never seemed to have left entirely. Yeah. So when, so when, when this stuff re arises though, it's, it's it's unbearable by comparison. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't seem to last though, you know, it's mm. it's just energetically it just seem... energetically and it'd be more physical now you'll find. Yeah. There'll be a more physical sensation. But um yeah the, um I forgot what you uh lost it then. I don't but, know but, what I'm asking him. I'm but, I'm happy I'm happy to I wanted to say I'm very happy that you're you're doing this because um, it's so fresh, and 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 there's no um, you know no bullshit. It's it's um, you're not trying to sell something. There's no yeah. It, you're not talking about non-dual theory. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm so I'm re I'm really glad that you're. Um, no, that's I, I, I found this. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, my friend said to me the other day, she was laughing at Lisa because she was saying, some of the, sometimes you can see that Lisa's so absent because I do such silly things on Ustream. She said for about five minutes, I just stood with my mouth gaping open. <laughs> oh. She said I look like a child. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah, what do you say? <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. Yeah, um, but it's it's amazing at the moment how many people I am speaking to where there's a collap collapsing happening. It's really nice. It seems to this subject seems to have really expanded over the last couple of years. You know, and, and even this, uh, you, you know, the, the 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 crumbling is a story, isn't it? Yeah. It, it's um, you know, it seems in, when you look back, it seems like there's a crumbling. Yeah. But at the moment, it, it really isn't because as it, it isn't because in, and the the answer always comes back to the experience. Most of the time, there isn't somebody there, Lawrence. Most of the time, yeah. there's just what's happening, yeah. and then that person comes up and remembers itself, and then suddenly it's got a whole story that goes with it, and then the pain might come of I don't want to experience this. This is uncomfortable, and then there might be a trying to release the pain, which is obvious that that's going to happen and not wrong in any way, but. Um, then when there's making cup of tea or yawning or looking at the sunset or driving the car, there's absolutely nobody there. There's just what's happening. And there's no sense of you releasing anything. It's been a whole fictional story that's just got overexcited. It's got so overexcited, it's become an energy that really has become real. Yeah. 
And this yeah. is the absolute collapse of back into what's happening, and then you're not even sure if it's happening or not. There's not even anyone there to be sure if it is or not. You, you just become a big question mark if someone says, are you experiencing, is there awareness, is there aliveness, you're like... Pfft. Yeah, I know, it's like, huh? Yeah, it's, it really it's, is. It's almost, huh? it's almost shocking when, when people ask, you know, you know, like, how are you, yeah. or like, what, you know, how do you answer? It's, it's, uh... You're like, uh... And then there comes the lies, the fake <laughs> lies that just deal with society. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> I like what you said. I, I noticed also the impatience with this listening to people's stories, you know, but Yeah. You can't. You, they're not even interested in the least of body mind story, let alone anyone else's. <laughs> well, exactly, exactly, and it, it, it's boring, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, what's happening is more interesting. Mm. Brief stories can be interesting. Yeah, we we have a forest fire going on here. Oh yeah, whereabouts are you? In Arizona. Oh wow. Wow. So it's, a, it's literally like a smoke is pouring all over. <laughs> it's, oh, uh, it's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's really stunningly beautiful. I've been in one in Perth. Mm. And yeah. so you're just completely in fog. At the moment, yeah. Then the wind shifts and it's and, and you see this huge plume coming out of the mountains. It's, wow. it's amazing. It's quite far away from you? Uh, 15 miles. Not Not so far. It's very windy at the moment. It changes, yeah. Hmm. It's quite exciting. Yeah, it is quite exciting. You might have to run in any moment if the wind picks yeah. up. <laughs> Unless you've not got too much forest around you. You know, so it's, it's so it's so amazing that talking in this conversation, the transparency is so amazing, and it's such a relief. And in, in, in the normal like intercourse, you know, just kind of going through the day with people, you know, it's it's uh, there's such a um, you know, I, I don't know how to deal with it. It's like, it just, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's a, it's a constant invitation to, to play a game. And, and, uh, yeah. But, but I'm just noticing the, the uh, contrast. Yeah. It's, it's just amazing. Yeah, society is such a funky dance. How it got set up to be so stressed and constantly be trying to get somewhere. Amazing. You know, it's, it's fun to, to bullshit a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But if that's, if it's all bullshit. Yeah. You know. Yeah, a lot, but a lot of society does seem to live in a lot of bullshit. Halloween party. <laughs> it's a funny image. Uh, 
I, I actually I went to a, a dress up party, and and uh, where where everyone uh, dresses up one another, and and you know people are putting balloons on your chest and stuff, and suddenly you you you're looking down and and and, and it's amazing like how comforting it it is, and 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 it, and it it really exposes how how, how thin how thin the uh, the story, the identity we, we strap on, you know? Yeah. Just doesn't really have much more substance than, than a Halloween costume. No, it doesn't at all. But it can mm. appear so incredibly real. Mm. I mean, it's even less than a Halloween co uh, costume because it doesn't, it's not, at least the, the Halloween costume you can physically feel the me energy, you can't ever, ever find it. Mm. Like, you can't even physically touch it. Not that touch is necessarily more real, but at least with the Halloween costume, you can touch it. The me energy, it can't, you can't, there's, it's just invisible. It's, it's a fake dream happening while the body's moving. Mm. But it can be a whole, a whole world of, different experiencing life is very creative wow. someone was saying the other day there's this song that i really love actually that i played at the beginning called um i would die for you and it's such an yeah. intense song if you listen to the words and i yeah. doubt that would have been written if there wasn't me energy there it's such yeah. intense it's all about this lady that killed herself for her partner oh yeah for the love of him and, and and here we are in in, in non dual world like <laughs> like dreaming of dying, <laughs> you know where the, the death. Is. <laughs> it's a it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny, dreaming of so, that person dying. Yeah. It's, and it never dies, it never started. But the me energy, I sound sometimes a bit harsh on it sometimes. It's so creative as well. Like Life really is ultimate creativity. Mm. Yeah, that's a party, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, why not? Yeah, why not? Mm. I'm just hanging out if anybody's anybody else wants to jump in. We got Alec Alec Alexander. Alexander, I think you said. Hello. Hello. Hey Alexander, am I saying your name right? Uh yeah, you yeah, you can say Alexander. You can say Alex like whatever you like, really. Okay. <laughs> Alex easier for me. Okay, yeah. Thanks, uh, Lawrence. I really enjoyed chatting with you. If you feel like chatting again, just call Lawrence. Carry on there. Alex. Alec. You know, okay. Uh, yeah, well, how, how, how well do you hear me? How well do I hear you? Very well. Very well. That's very well. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, what I wanted to share, um, but I, I'd like to be brief, okay, just to keep your attention on. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so like a, like a week ago, uh, there was some kind of like a, an awakening event. Well, I can't really say, can't really say it's an event, but yeah. it happened. Um, what are we yes. talking about? What what seem, seemed to happen? Yeah, something like this. Um, there, were, there was an experience of love or a collapsing or some... Um, well, <laughs> well, I just found myself without myself. Yeah. 
just found myself without anybody. Yeah. So, um, well, since then, it was flip-flopping a lot. Yeah. Um, still a lot of personal energy coming up, a lot of old stuff to deal with. Now, uh, <laughs> that's kind of a funny story. Uh, mm. What happened uh, recently? Uh, I went to my mother to have uh, to my mother's house to have dinner, uh, fish and chips. Like, she 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 cooks really good fish and chips. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, we were just eating and talking, and suddenly it just dawned on me: there is nobody, and <laughs> I can see myself. <laughs> With my mouth open, full of fish and chips and all this, <laughs> I was just looking into the space and just realizing there's nobody. But then I looked at my mother, and uh, she was not my mother anymore. Really, what was what what was in front of me was just all that. Really, just um, I, I can't really say what it was. Just what was there. It was all one, it is all one, and uh, she became nothing more than an appearance, like uh, an image. And at that moment, I felt so much loss, really, because I looked at her face, and uh, what I really thought about her, all I knew about her, just I saw it collapsing with my own eyes, and just this started disappearing, and she was not my mother anymore. So. Uh, um, it was very hard, really, to to um, to be experiencing this kind of uh, loss. Um, and well, another thing I noticed was the feeling that, uh, like, holy fuck, there's like nothing to hold on to, really, nothing to hold on to. It was really crazy. Uh, I had to. I mean, I. Uh, let's call it the personal energy just had to come back because it was so intense yeah yeah if the so if the person i mean now it's begun to be a glimpse maybe for alec of what's being talked about here but it's absolute death and if the person could comprehend that it would never want this but it can't help it hearing this and the attraction to it and the moving towards it it's it, it's it's not like you imagine it, it's not you becoming something, you lose everything. But then there's not a problem that you've lost everything because you've lost everything and you can't, you haven't got the ability to look at yourself anymore and see that you've lost everything. There's just what is appearing and there's no relationship left. That's maybe the one that's the hardest for the person. There's no relationship left. The body that's might right. still go around to its mum's every Friday for fish and chips, but you don't see her as your mum anymore. Oh, yeah. my mum heard me saying this once and she told me she cried. She listened to one of my talks. She doesn't really understand non-duality. She said she cried her eyes out. That's, well, that's... That's the way it goes. Yeah, that's how it works. Um, but uh, I remember you say in one of your videos that um, probably after your awakening, uh, there were a lot of tears on your side um, just because of this loss of, of what seemed to be the closest ones and now there are no closest ones and there is no person anymore yeah I think when that, that when I was that when I was talking about that I can't remember what I said uh, <laughs> but that I think was maybe when I was still a, like a awakening or flip-flopping and lot I might still be awakening now I don't I don't really know if there's what what it is now but it that was when it was more in, intense and there was more um, energy of that person coming and going, and then there gets a point where you don't know where you are anymore. So, just to sum it up, at, at, at least this question, because I have another, another one. Um, eventually, it just must come to this, right? It's there's just no uh, no way of not accepting this, or rather, at some point, there's just no body to to accept it. Yeah. It's not about acceptance at all. This is loss. Okay. It's loss of the one that cares. Yeah. While the flip flopping's happening, though, it's going to be very acute, uh, confusing because there will be freedom appearing and there will always be a taste, more than likely, of that freedom. And then the person will come in and interpret it, and that's where the confusion will arise. You can't ever think about this. No mm -hmm. thought is true. Thoughts are just a mechanism to help with society. 
but when the person's coming back then it claims this and it interprets this and understands it but there might be great freedom there so it's not even known that there's somebody coming in and accepting it or um uh or making stories about it because it's it's so hard to the it's so hard to to know that that's a thought it's, it's yeah. like who would even know it's a thought and when there's a lot of crumbling of the self then the thoughts can easily slip in and seem like a truth in some way yeah yeah that's the worst that's just the worst <laughs> but it, like that's even... that's what happens when it happens and if there's somebody with a lot of awakening and a bit of story running then that's what's happening and I don't know how you'd ever know the stories completely stop because that would be another story anyway to say I'm absolutely empty of self or there is no self here yeah, uh, it's kind of like say. it's kind of like a bit of a story but I kind of say it and imply it that there's no self in this body my mechanism but you can't really say or think that because as soon as you say or think it you're back in a story again I can just describe things but I can't be adamant and certain about things and I have to implode everything I've said like, really, yeah, I have to like, destroy everything I've said because I can't speak any truths. Yeah, you can't really believe what you say. Because... No, because it's all thoughts. So if yeah. you think that anything that I say is a truth, then you're just back into thoughts again. What's happening or what might happen in these conversations, and it might feel a little bit scary, or when listening to these talks or maybe reading it, is that um, the, that mechanism that's that feels like you're reading the story or you're listening to Lisa's words might dissolve and then there's just nothing happening or there's oneness or, but it, you wouldn't even know that it's just a dissolving you lose yourself that's what's actually happening in these talks it's not that you're actually understanding something as soon as you've understood something and you're back in la la land that's right that's, that's why right. I particularly I'm a big fan of live talks not written um, although it can, it seemingly the written words might seem to, but in the live talks, it's like you, it's like you dissolve, but that also could happen in going for a pint at your friends uh, at the pub or, or, uh, going for a bike ride or in the car, but it also might happen in these talks. That's, that's fine, I guess, but yeah. To I'd love to them. say these talks are more it, but. How could that be it? But it might be uh, resonating in these talks and then some form of of knowing that beyond the thoughts. But that's all yeah. a bit in fairyland. Yeah, but basically to the, to the mind, um, let's say to the separate self, if, if we were to call it, it's, it is dev devastating, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's just absolutely so deceiving because you're, you're now going to lose your mother. And all the people that you knew. Yeah, but now from the perspective of the of of, of the separate self of, of Alex, that's terrifying. And uh, um, now what was what's happening here is like coming to terms with it, like saying last goodbyes and <laughs> like kind of grieving, uh, like you know, uh, preparing for that to happen. I'm not sure if there is any any uh, sense to. Uh, but that's what's happening, yeah. Um, if I mean, if that's what's happening, that's what's happening. That's yeah. what we can say. And then you'll uh, say goodbye to yourself. Well, I'm not saying that's what will happen, but then eventually, Alex yeah. will dissolve. Yeah, well, a lot of you know there was the the, the usually there's a lot of um, psychological background to to um, why people are uh, drawn to awakening. What happened in my case? Uh, I was lying in my bed like very, um, de so let's say, deprived of, of sleep after like two, two nights without sleep, a lot of learning and stuff. And uh, I was trying to go to sleep and what happened was uh, a thought appeared and said, uh, I'm going to die. And it was a full realization, like it was just a thought like, oh fuck it, let's go to sleep. It was uh, a complete realization of that um, impending fact. and. I, there was just no control over it. Uh, it just stayed with me 
<laughs> and the next day there was the, I had to write some test and I, I have no idea how it happened that it went well, but it did, which is nice. Um, but I looked around and, and all those people around, let's say people, I, I'm, <laughs> uh, uh, what I thought at that time was, how do you people not know? How do you people don't know that you're going to die, really? <laughs> uh, well, it wasn't really comforting at that point. Um, <laughs> it's so, kind of uh, funny, isn't it, that society just carries on and they're like, two to two to two, gathering all these things. And I mean, they know they comprehend it, but that's that's what's happening. If that's what's appearing, it's not anybody's choice. And it, and yeah. and the idea that um, that you that that story yeah. makes Wait, sense yeah. um, is yeah. just oh, Francisca. Can I just get you to turn off your microphone for a moment? Thanks. Hello. There you go. Um, and the idea that that that. Um, that you also know anything about what led to that moment where it all collapsed, even if the thoughts were prior were about death, you don't know what led to anything. It could be that you um, bumped your head and didn't notice. You just you just don't know any of that. It it might not have ever happened. You can't conclude any of it. You can't make sense of this at all. But you don't really have to. Um, no. You don't really feel like it, do you? No, and you, and you, it doesn't really it doesn't really matter. Yeah, <laughs> it's just crazy. As yeah, well. we're just sat here at the end of the day, like. Uh, yeah, well, uh, there, there's another thing I wanted to ask you about. <laughs> uh, you might find it. You might find it. Um, well, I don't know what you find it like. Anyway. Uh, I, I've just got it written somewhere there because right. So <laughs> from let's say from the perspective of full awakening, uh, death of the separate self. I don't know what full awakening would be. Okay, no bad wording. What let's would you say, say full awakening is? Yeah, well, I think um, that's an impossibility. Full awakening. We there can just be a collapse to the point where nobody, where somebody doesn't know where they are anymore. That's it. I don't know if you call that full awakening or just being an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone's like, know. who are you? Are you liberated? And you're like, yeah, like are you not liberated? liberated? Like, uh, what are you talking about, right? <laughs> you wouldn't uh, know. You wouldn't know that you're fully liberated. It would be impossible. Yeah. yeah. So uh, my question is, yeah. uh, at least I hope that you have experience in this area. Let's say um, with, with a separate self dying. Yeah. Um, a lot of desires, uh, at least, let's say, desires that originated from the separate self, they die with it. Yeah. Um, one of those desires could be the desire for sex and for love. Now, it, once you see everything as one, because that's what it is in, in, in my case, uh, just one self in front of you, just one thing happening, really, um, there is no kind of like discernment between um, between separate entities like mother, uh, like uh, girlfriend and so on. Now, does, uh, does this mean that desires for sex um, dissolve as well? Well, I mean, do I, you think that desires for food will fall? Uh, no, nah, probably, probably won't. So why would desires for sex? Because it's the same kind of thing. You know, well, it might originate from from the mind sometimes, sometimes. Yeah, just, you know. um, I think that it will become a lot less complicated. Um, mm -hmm. But the natural desires of the body will still carry on, like the desire for food, the desire for sex if you're in a younger body um, will carry on, or reproduction, right. not reproduction, reproduction. <laughs> um, uh, for reproducing, reproduction, that's really funny. Okay. Yeah. Reproducing will carry on because that's the way the body mind set up. You always just look to animals for this. Yeah. Like, um, like animals don't have a personal sense of self and they are eating and bonking or having sex and, um, and two swans can stay together their whole life 
but it's not a personal entity in relationship with another personal entity. It's just the body-mind mechanism acting out its programming. But you'll never know what that programming is specifically to each body-mind mechanism. So you might find more body-mind mechanisms have less desire to, to have sex, and you might find some body-mind mechanisms are gay, which can't have children, but there still might be that programming in there. You never really know it, but it it's kind of working its way out and you don't need to know it either and any assumptions that you make will always get um they'll always get knocked down life is very compassionate like that so if you think oh i'm over sex now then you'll have a partner brought into your life where you want to have sex all the time <laughs> it's always like that life you're like yes no i've got past the point of eating or sex and then someone will be the most amazing cook or the amazing lover and you'll be like oh okay so that still happens like you you can't make as soon as you make any conclusions you're back into that person right. we just don't know what's going to happen okay. and you don't need to know you don't need to know it will happen it's the way it happens well at least i hope sex is as pleasant i mean it doesn't it won't belong to anybody uh that's because of well, i no <laughs> oh, yeah, that's I really sweet i love your honest, honesty there you hope it will be as pleasant <laughs> Yeah, I, I well, what, what, what is there to hide? Like, really. Um, um, That's so cute. I love it that you said that. <laughs> no, uh, you know what I mean? It's, it does, it's, some people say that most, um, um, most pleasure taken out from sex is in the mind, really, and not, um, not in the physicality of it. So if there is nobody... Uh, doing it really because you know there is nobody doing it it just happens uh, is it still as pleasant i would say that um it's all about the physicality so so nice but even if there's even if there's thoughts or fantasies in there that doesn't mean necessarily mean to be personal that could just be what's happening like uh it doesn't need to we just have no idea in the end and it's just happening and thoughts can still arise but it and images can still arise but it doesn't belong to anyone anymore and it's not your completion having sex or not having sex it's just a it's a pleasure but i find i find making love is a very physical thing but maybe for other people it's completely different and to take that as the norm would just be to try and be something yeah well when i do it it doesn't really feel like I'm doing it, it just happens. Right? Yeah, yeah. Often when people are making love, the person falls away. Sometimes self-consciousness comes in, like you want them to like you. or, But most of the time, it's a very in-the-moment thing. It's one of those activities that everyone loves because the person drops away often in it. It's a yeah. very immediate thing. They yeah. say that when you orgasm, um, that there's absolutely no self-awareness for those couple of moments. So you can see why we get so fixated on it. But then you don't need it anymore to not have self-awareness, but it's still a very pleasurable act. It's set up to be that way, otherwise we wouldn't reproduce. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you, you wouldn't want it. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, there would be nothing. <laughs> yeah, there would just be no let's, things. Let's make, let's make sex unpleasant. <laughs> let's make it unpleasant and let's just kill everybody. <laughs> yeah, the whole world would just go. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, well, I uh, guess that's all I needed to know, at least at this point. Yeah. Well, so, if you've got any more questions, just call back. Yeah. I, lo I love talking with people. That's my favourite. Because then you can have really um, spontaneous uh, back and forwards rather than it's a bit planned sometimes when people are writing it. Yeah. Yeah, too much thinking. <laughs> yeah, involved. it's yeah. very, it's very sweet. Like I just loved your comments there. I've forgotten them now, but I, I feel the laughter from it. Uh, comments. Yeah, there were some things that you said that really tickled me. I liked it. <laughs> your honesty. <laughs> nice. That's 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 nice. Yeah. That's nice. Okay. No, well, yes. thanks, Alex. Alex. Thanks a lot. All right. I like whatever you want to say, Alex, Alexander. Like, well, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Does it? Alec works for me. Okay, I mean it's it's the one I hate really. Oh, I okay. Hate. You like I, Alexander better? Uh, no. What no, I think Alex resonates. Alex, better. okay, okay, yeah, Alex. Just that, yeah. yeah, that's very easy in English. Alex is good for me. Okay. <laughs>
Yeah, works for you, <laughs> works for me. Very good. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that's all I, all I, all I wanted, all I needed. So yeah. Oh, thank you. We'll call back if you want to send Nick house. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye. Cheers. Hi, Tobias. Hello. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Am I saying um, your name right? Um, I think you're actually saying it kind of Danish. Oh. Um, so yeah, I guess you are. But isn't Tobias a, a, an English name? Or mm, not that I've heard of. Toby, oh, okay. but not Tobias. But maybe oh, okay. it's an old English name that I'm just not aware of. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't actually know what I'm calling in, but I, it, well, um, I called in because of the Ustream ads, because I'm on my, I'm on my phone, so, hmm. yeah. Well, you're more than welcome to sit and listen on there if you like. Yeah. If you've got any questions, just turn your mic on and ask. Okay. All yeah. right. Thanks, Tobis. Hey, Franziska. Franziska? Yeah. I'm just going to go to the toilet and then Bye. I will be back. <laughs> but yeah, but I'm just coming to you. I just have to go go and visit my friend downstairs. You can all look at Khaleesi. She's so beautiful. Je Okay, I'm back, Francisca. Hey. Hey, sweetie. <laughs> Just had to relieve myself. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> Pleasure. Um, I uh, wanted to um, just share something. Maybe something comes up for you or okay. not. <laughs> I okay. don't know. But um, in this meaninglessness that somehow is created out, out of that uh, non-caring because no one cares anymore but the body still does its business does all the things it does yeah um, it's like creativity but in a way to me is it the last story I need to tell myself while this body is still running around and alive i have a feeling this expression is the last story i need to tell in order to experience it in a way what's because what's what's the last story yeah that uh, this body does everything it does for creativity or pure expression yeah yeah no, that's a story because it's so uh, meaningless. Sometimes I have a feeling it's like a joke. 
that I don't catch, but still I laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Something. <laughs> but uh, it's it's like a never ending why, and then I just laugh mm -hmm. and it uh, falls apart again. <laughs> it's like a building up and uh, falling apart without any meaning. Yeah. Without any meaning. I mean, it is it is it is ultimate creativity. This, but that's again a story. Like, I mean, it's just me trying to communicate to you, and it's not the reality to it in any way. Yeah, because something um, like while the body is still alive, it's like uh, if there's no story, there's no world. There there must be some kind of last story to experience. In a way, it seems to me, but um, I, I just um, I just had had the feeling that because because there's, there's still a world. Yeah. Where's the world? Only if I try to avoid this meaninglessness. Oh, if right, I fall yeah. into it, there's just no world. Yeah. And really, no thing. So then something comes up to like enjoy this creativity and then I notice it's crumbling. It was a story. Yeah. That's that's also not true. So even even heaven or joy and everything that that is so exciting, it's also just just the story. To avoid this no meaning yeah. way. What do you mean joy is a way of avoiding it? The joy, the description of it? Yeah, to tell the story. Of joy. Uh, it's because you, it, it's like for experiencing yeah. joy. So you have to um, find a re still find a reason for why this joy is appearing. Or anything that is, that is coming up. I just... Uh, like, um, like you mean like a... So, for you to do something, there has to be a meaning to it, or you just yeah. It, it, still, I have a feeling that when when we talked, um, and there's always a conversation. If it's about love or or joy or anything, it's still a story. I have a feeling it still uh, carries on to avoid the um, the meaninglessness of it. But I don't know. I I, I really um, I really don't know. Yeah, I don't know exactly what you mean by that, but that's quite funny because we're talking about meaninglessness. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, it's just sometimes um, I just try to um, to uh, to find to find out if if this uh, this expression. Is still personal, but who would be? Oh, well, when you were it? talking about when a few weeks ago you were expressing me, to me what love it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Is a bit of a story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 You, there will be a last lack of interest in that soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I I really notice myself uh, to uh, I I really notice myself not uh, to be so excited about it in, anymore on the outside yeah. it, it's really um i have i have all this fun inside of me but i don't have to carry it out into the world or no uh, tell um, anyone no yeah it. no you don't have to tell anyone and what yeah. you're but what um but you'll notice uh, a lack of interest in expressing it because at first it's like holy fuck and mm -hmm. the love is so exciting that there's obviously going to be a wanting to talk about it. I'm sure my first couple of videos were through that excitement. I'm sure it's, uh, but then eventually that 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 will dissolve as well. There will be lack of interest in that. It's funny, isn't it? Even though the love is still there or there's still love, there's a lack of interest of expressing it. Yeah, it's it's um, it's amazing, and I, I really... some people will get caught in that for years though. So it it really. Um carries them on and on and on yeah they'll get caught in trying to spread the love and i know that sounds like such a nice thing and i sound like such a bitch saying this <laughs> <laughs> like it's really sweet but it's like it's about them 
But I know I can't express it any more than that, but I sense that it's resonating for me to say it with you now, Francisco, even though there's seemingly other body mind le mechanisms li listening. Like, you know, what I'm, you get a sense of what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. That expression of that love is about them and wanting others, like that expression to tell others is about them. Yeah. This is what came up for me, why I wanted to uh, check in. Because I had the feeling that this was a, a, a kind of avoidance of meaninglessness. Yeah. Because I had to tell myself why, why this is happening, this, this complete explosion and um, so it needed to come out to, to express itself but really it was just kind of an, a relief to, yeah. to let it out because it would put on meaning yeah. to, to all of this <laughs> yeah <laughs> but still it's um, really as soon as I'm talking about it and speaking those words it's already uh, gone and mm. not real <laughs> so mm. But still, uh, it uh, it creates um, some sort of some some things need this reflection because I really uh, noticed that it was kind of avoiding uh, this hopelessness. Yeah, and it was giving this some purpose as if it was love. Yeah. Which, I, which I mean, I'm happy to go there and like I can get excited and talk about love with people, and but this i mean this is this is nothing this has got nothing to do with anything yeah. like there's no one thing that's any better and the expression of suffering the expression of love i know it the expression of peace the expression of war is no better mm -hmm. yeah it's like a final straw you try to cling on to yeah. to tell you it's it's for God or for love or for, for anything. Yeah. So you you have one last <laughs> one last thing to hold on. Yeah. yeah, it's for the love of nothing, nothing. Yeah. And that's so profound that word. I mean, one of my friend my friend was saying to me the other day. It really made me laugh. Actually, he was saying that he splits up the word. So nothing means absolutely nothing, and no thing means no thing. And I was like, but that both means the same thing. And he was like, no, that's two different things. No thing and nothing. And I was like, no. And we both laughed our heads off at this. Yeah. It's like nothing, nothing. And I notice all these conversations, like, like the one you were just uh, talking about, it becomes poetry because it uh, it completely falls, falls um, into nothing once it's spoken. And, and it gives it gives it all those meanings, yeah. and at the same time, no meaning at all. No it's meaning. Really it is. <laughs> There's just no meaning to it or anything, though. And this is all absolutely pointless. It's appearing because it's appearing, and even saying because it's appearing is too much. It appears and disappears for nothing. It's uh, it's funny. It's so to... scary for most people to hear that. Sorry to interrupt you, though. Just because I know that when I start talking like this, I've experienced a few people have a bit of a panic attack because it's quite scary. This for that identity to hear that meaninglessness <laughs> can bring on like heart palpitations for some people. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty uh, surprised that this body doesn't. Um, get into panic attacks uh, in, in these times uh, because I, I'm, I'm really surprised that there is no anxiety or panic. There might be fear sometimes. I, I don't even, I, I wouldn't notice anymore. Uh, I, I really don't uh, care about that. And and I'm I don't know why this body is so calm <laughs> because it's, it's, it's in the middle of, of a storm in a way. And still, it just sits quietly. Yeah. <laughs> it loses everything, and it's like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. everything's yeah. meaningless. The job's seeming very hard, <laughs> like hard to <laughs> to do because the whole life does kind of collapse in a way. Yeah, it's it's really amazing because usually I, I I can imagine or I I see the point in. Uh, this message creating uh, a lot of panic and yeah. anxiety in people. 
because because everybody the whole sense of self is always li living in meaning and most people particularly in spiritual circles are living in that meaning of love like it's great that you brought it up and living in the mean that it's all for love or it's all got a purpose that it's all to come home as this this has somewhere to go and this yeah. has nowhere to go that's really full on for that separate entity to hurt here but some people body mind mechanisms might be resonating with that beyond what they think it means I'm just so uh, thankful that um, uh, there is a place like this where there is not this spiritual um, hippiness where it's all about love and you you yeah. you get to be told stories. And it's that, really crazy, isn't it, that that's yeah. normally about fear. Yeah. That's normally that 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 telling that each other that it's about love. And it's about freedom and saving the world even or spreading the word of love or that it's about the love is normally to try and cover up that fear of the meaninglessness and the nothingness of everything. It it's still to, to give themselves purpose in some way and meaning. It, it, seem, it seems to be kind of a lullaby yeah. you, you sing to to soothe and calm yeah, yeah. to go to sleep yeah. in a way. <laughs> That's yes. what the whole human storytelling was originally about. It just got confused, was to make yourself feel better. But then the stories all got confused and feeling better. We weren't sure what felt better. Mm -hmm. And the mind went a bit crazy. But yeah, it is about trying to feel better about that fear. Which just covers it up and keeps it go. Well, I don't know if it keeps it going, actually. It's just a cap, I don't know what keeps what going. It's just happening. Yeah, if you don't even know what's going on or not going on mm -hmm. anymore and what keeps anything <laughs> running. It's because it's not running. You you could you could spin that into circles and circles, but in a way it just uh, collapses and you just laugh or cry or <laughs> whatever. Yeah. So there's kind of a lot of um, nothing in this um, in this no meaning, and if I don't create a story for it, it's still only this, only this, which is completely enough, even without love, without creativity, without expression, and all these wonderful words and, and stories. Yep. Yeah. It's really beautiful in a way. Mm. Because it, it doesn't even have to be expressed. I could I could just um, be paralyzed from head to toe and would spend my life uh, not meeting any anyone and still could be in that. Yeah. It is like the secret because you can't even express it even if you do have the word, like the ability to speak. It is, it's just heard when it's heard. I thank you so much, Lisa. Thanks, Francisca. I love speaking with you. <laughs> yeah, I love it. It, it, it just uh, creates a clarity, even though that's a story, but it's uh, still, it, it kind of releases something. And, it, and it's just always nice to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hi, Susie. Hi, Lisa. Hey. Nice to see you. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, so it was a lot of interesting discussions. You look so incredibly uh, young in your picture. Uh, actually, <laughs> it was uh, taken about 10 years ago, so 
<laughs> no wonder. Uh, maybe I'm not that tall anyway. So, um, so my question is... Um, Paul really enjoyed your article you sent him. He was telling yeah, me about yeah, he it. Replied me, yeah. Oh, he yeah, did reply. Uh, uh, did you read it? Did you get a chance to I read haven't it? read it yet, but he was really yeah. inspired by it. He told me about it. I've forgotten now, but he told me at yeah. the time. I was very passionate when I was writing it. Like, it was like totally my passion and my expertise put together. He really like, enjoyed it. Okay, I'm glad, yeah. And, and I wanted to share it. Like, I mean, I, I'm not trying, to, I think, to uh, impress my ego, but I just... Uh, <laughs> Even if you are, that's totally yeah. okay. That's yeah. the way it goes. It's okay. Yeah. That's how it is. Yeah. Um, so, one thing I want to ask was, um, yesterday I had a sad news. Um, someone who I knew since childhood, uh, he died. Yeah. Only cousin. So, um, and then the feelings I got was, was anger and... Um, a bit sadness and a little bit but then I was angry and uh, later I interpreted as angry I was angry with life for playing game like he was sick and he died so and uh, it's just um, I couldn't explain why I should be angry hello hi yeah yeah and so uh, I, I felt that life was pain it was mm. a cruel game to play with them uh, yeah, it is really cruel when that personal identity looks at death. I mean, it's really cruel when when somebody looks at life. So for the insects, for my dog that's just asleep down there, she yeah. she, she doesn't have the ability to perceive that she's alive. There's yeah. just aliveness. So she never goes through the torment of death, of physical death. Yeah. Because she, she doesn't die. She has no sense of being alive. So how could she die? But for the human, because the human's got the ability to perceive the body and to perceive other bodies, death is seems like a cruel, nasty game. But ultimately, and I don't mean to, well, there's that anger there or there's that fear there or there's the upset, yeah. and it's most probably yeah. fear that the anger's coming from. Well, that's there, then that's the expression, and I don't mean to say this to cover it up in any way or to try and yeah. relax it. It's that's That's what's appearing. But there yeah. is never any death, and that's also, if you don't look at yourself as the body and the mind relaxes for a bit, the experience exactly. so, I mean, is... I, I did, yeah, so that, the, I, I mean, following yeah. that, it came to be like, okay, so, I, I really don't know whether he's better after dying, I mean, whether he was relieved from that pain or yeah. whatever the suffering he was having. And, and that's also the other thing. idea, that we don't know life or death being better. There ultimately is no death, everything's just changing continuously. But we also don't... We come with this arrogance of humans that we think we know that living's better. Exactly. So I, or being I, I, in I mean, that form is better. Questions, and I, I was thinking like I don't even what really life or existence is. Is like it, yeah. It, before I know exactly what, who died or what died, because it's the memory that I'm attached to about him. Yeah. And the, maybe the projections that I'm realizing, but then. Um, but then there's a part of me that has to relate to the world yeah. and everyone else. So. And there's something that's gone forever, which yeah, is is yeah. is really like um, that is sad. Just in like the sadness without identity there. But there's also for that person, there's something that's gone, and the person tries to cover that up. It tries to not lose things. There's yeah. that that story will never that like that body mind mechanism that you have. Can't be in the story anymore. No, yeah. it's gone. It's gone. Yeah. It's turned into something else. But that's why it's always happening. I mean, just when you eat your dinner, that's what's yeah. happening. But you've just there's more of a story placed with, yeah. with human bodies normally. But then not to be attached seems like a betrayal of others, like this, or relationships. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I'm, it's not a choice that I make, but. Uh, well, there can be impersonal. It seems feeling there like can, that. Like I mean, if there you can, can be, not be attached and not suffer less, perhaps. Yeah, but it's impersonal. There can still be sadness coming up. So the news is heard and there's crying. Um, but it's it's you're not losing something. You never had anything. There's no you there that ever had anything. Yeah. I, the, I remember last year, I, uh, someone very aunt who was very close to me died, and then I was really going through that and thinking, what did I really lose? Like it's the memory. Yeah. Um, of her. Uh, yeah. I ever knew was the, what I was aware of and what is uh, lost yeah. this the ability to continue that yeah. and yeah and, and you see it's all in thought question. bound yeah, so. loss loss is all in thoughts 
there can be extreme sadness in each moment, like or in the moment. So if Khaleesi got squashed by a car, there could be absolute sadness and crying and wailing. But then it all becomes very thought based. Who you lose, exactly. And it's it, it's it, it becomes a once removed reality of storytelling. And there's another question if you have time, Lisa. Yeah. Um, this is about time. This is actually I had was thinking before I had this news. So it's about time concept of time. Now yeah. I get that I we, we can think of the past and the few imagine the future in a very limited way. At this moment. Yeah. Uh, but then I I heard uh, specifically Anita Mujani like in her near death experience in the book she explains that at death she could see the past life as happening now. So um. But then I remember you said, uh, like, what is happening is like in the kaleidoscope where things constantly change. Yeah. So it's not. So is it possible that I mean, time travel or like the past is existing at the moment, or it just yeah, what yeah, is for done sure. is done forever. Like what is done is can't be ever changed. Like what? No, happened? no. I feel like there's possibility of time travel, but again, it's happening here, and the way that we perceive time these images of time is such a limited way. I mean, what we're experiencing now is so limited to the brain. I'm sure you've yeah. worked that out. It's such a limited perspective yeah. on time. Like time is just a human invention in order to survive better. So yeah. we're looking at things in a really warped way. And I'm sure when you've looked into science, it's mind blowing. Like um, yeah. if you if move you fast. Holes, and if you look at it yeah. the, like beyond the earth, then it, it becomes all a uh, warped puzzle and uh, and you move the body f fast enough and then everything slows yeah. down yeah it's so it's all perspective doesn't fit our model of space and time no. the, the current simplified model and the way that the mind or the brain or yeah. thoughts interpret it but yeah this is all mystery who knows what could happen we humans could invent time travel travel there could be all sorts of things the only thing for sure is it's always happening in this one beingness this one presence, yeah, always. Then, uh, hmm. the, wouldn't the present change? But it's so confusing. I think it's probably not possible to uh, conceptualize and understand yeah. it. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, those are my questions, Lisa. I think I'll give time for the others. All right, thank you, Susie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice to thank speak you. with you, as always. Yeah, same here. Okay. Bye. Bye. Oh, I, I like it. I know sometimes it's hard to to follow when people are phoning in, but I really enjoy live conversations. So thank you for everyone that's calling in. Okay, let's go to some written questions. Hi, Raman, a nice backdrop. Thank you. Hi, Jish, Jahash. Hi, Phyllis. Hi, Lisa. You are looking beautiful. Will you talk or model tonight? <laughs> oh, you're so sweet, Phyllis. Hi, Danny. He likes the gothic background as well. Matt says, I think I'd still un like to when you're free, if you're up for it. If I can get my head around some questions, I may call in during the session, but sometimes it takes a while to get words together. And sometimes it's quite personal and sometimes I can't be asked. Nice intro music, sorry. Asked is a bit harsh. I mean sometimes questions just seem pointless. No, I know what you mean by asked. Is this what liberation is like? Are you going to make me laugh? I'm all out of fucks to give. But here's a rat's ass. <laughs> oh my god, I love that picture. I said that today to somebody that doesn't speak English, Matt. Uh, well, English isn't their first language, and I don't know if they knew what I meant. I don't give a rat's ass what we do, I said. That was to Paul, if you're listening. <laughs> but it's a funny English saying. It's very funny. And Matt's just sent me a picture. That's so funny that you would send it today, Matt. Hi. Peter. Hi, Lisa. Nice to see you again. Hey, Peter. Stan. From where you send out now. Beautiful broadcast computer. I'm at Paul's house and I've got plug-in internet so it's very good in Halda. I'm sure I said that right. 
I notice the practice of this, if any, is the way it just opens over and over throughout the day. Yeah, but it's, yeah, but it's happening without you. It's not anything anyone ever does. It's happening. It's appearing and disappearing, appearing and disappearing. Does Britain disappear when you aren't looking at it? Of course it does. Walter. Hi, Walter. In an experience necessary for waking up, is an experience necessary for waking up, or can it be learned or understood? It can't be learned or understood. And it's not an experience as such, it's a collapsing of a false dream. It's the end of a dream that wasn't really real. The me is like the dream at night, but just while the body is awake. I've been studying non-duality for quite some time, and there has been more and more getting it, but I can't relate to people who have a profound experience when there is a primant shift. Some people, it's just like a slow um, crumbling. Um, and other people, it's more of a dramatic shift. But it's a deconstruction, it's not something you get, and it's not something you learn. You're never going to understand non-duality. It's all in vain if you think that you'll understand it. What's happening when you learn non-duality, or when you think you learn non-duality, is you're unlearning everything you know. To then replace it with non-duality is just to place it with something else. Would love to chat with you. Well, call away, Anne, if you want to chat. Anne Golki. Golki. Hi, Lars. Thank you, Lisa, for your wonderful words. It's really revealing subtle bullshit stories in the experience. Very powerful. Wow. I think it does. Hi, Gad. Bonsoir. Bonsoir, Gad. It seems that spiritual experiences or flip. Hi, Anne. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I've never done this. This is fun. Yeah. Um, just to, some advice, if you've not yeah. done this before, is that Ustream's about a minute behind, so you have to listen to me through Skype, and okay. my facial reactions won't be the same as what voice you're hearing. Awesome. It's about a minute behind. Yeah, thanks for letting me know. It's a little bit confusing sometimes. People start answering to me on Ustream. Okay, cool. So I'll just turn off the volume part. Yeah. And just know that I'm not re responding to what you're saying. It's about a minute late. Well, um, yeah, so I have no idea what, why I'm calling. I had no idea this was going to happen today. <laughs> <laughs> me neither. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I came across A Course in Miracles uh, a couple of months ago and had my first full-blown awakening experience after meditating for quite a few years, and and it's shifted everything so dramatically, um, and you're definitely the first person I've found that speaks in such a direct way, and so I just want to let you know, like, it's just, I'm so happy I found you. It's awesome. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Because there's definitely, you know, phases of feeling completely insane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It depends. It's so different for every body-mind mechanism. But for some body-mind mechanisms, it can really screw up, like, um, the way the body-mind mechanism functions and the way it's been relating to the world. So the life can become a little bit more complicated. That's the way it goes. Yeah, I would say my biggest fear are just um, the most practical things, like money. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is... I'm, the... actually, I'm actually a meditation teacher, um, mm -hmm. and that's been challenging as it is, because it's not a, uh, a lucrative career, per se. <laughs> uh, so that's really the, my biggest clinging, is just fearing that, am I going to be okay, am I going to end up on the street, if I just let go... Yeah. And not worry about how I'm going to make money. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, Ramana Maharshi and the Buddha, they all ended up on the street. We don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Raman Maharshi was actually my first major teacher, I guess I could call him that. Yeah. 
It might, it might be, but I always say it in the negative. I'm not a positive teacher. I say it in the sense of that you don't need to trust. What will happen is like your natural nature is freedom and you don't need to put any activity into trusting. What will get dismantled is your idea that you don't trust. And then if you're home, if you're homeless, like Eckhart Tolle, I think was homeless for three years after his big awakening, then that will just be what's happening, which will be more painful than having a home. The body will be in more pain. But it yeah. it will just be as it is. It's unlikely in Western countries it will happen, but we never know. And I don't want to give any false hope. I know with the Course in Miracles, they're a bit more like a, if you trust, you will get all the money that you. And I just don't say all that sort of stuff. We don't know what's going to happen. The body's ultimately going to die. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I appreciate actually because it's. Uh, I think when you stay more from the negative the fear ar- like allows to arise like I, c- I could feel actually right when you said it it's like oh yeah, yeah anything really could happen yeah it's not all like yeah if you just trust the universe is going to lead you to all the best places yeah, yeah and that and that, those ideas are okay because they they can dismantle other ideas but then it's still living in more ideas that you you've got to trust society who's got to trust society or who's got to trust life and and it just leads to more complications where it's really a falling back into what's actually happening rather than anything that you think about it i've always was more attracted to the negative way of speaking about it because my my the lisa used to get carried away with herself if you gave her the positive <laughs> yeah and it's, it's so okay, that fear. That's part of life, fear. Okay. That's part of the body-mind mechanism. And while it's appearing, you can't escape that fear. Like, the body-mind mechanism will die. You know, the, the horse or the, ti- the tiger chasing the um, zebra, the zebra will be experiencing fear, and it has no sense of self. It doesn't suffer, and it's not separate. But there will be a sensation of fear, otherwise it wouldn't run. So I don't know much about actually. Sorry? You med- I don't know much about your background. Yeah. Were you a meditator? I was actually for um for a Buddhist group. Mhm. For many and was for that many helpful? years. Because I do find it to be quite helpful to. I found it stabilized Lisa's personality. It what? I'm sorry. I it stabilized Lisa's personality. Yeah. Like um, Lisa's per- personality before that was a little bit up and down. And I found mm-hmm. it still was up and down, but it stabilized it a lot more. And um, and there was detachment. What I did notice in the meditation groups was there were people that had been in it for 30, 40, 50 years, and they seemed depressed. I was only ever in it five years. Yeah. And they seemed very attached to their meditation practice. But that's that's just my opinion. It's not. But in the story of Lisa, I found it quite grounding learning to meditate, and just to to be okay with it. You're right about them being depressed. Um, it seems like it's definitely more depressed group than let's say a yoga group. Yeah. There is something yeah. about just maybe because it's so solitary. The meditation is not really... Yeah, and sometimes I think yes. that they've got a little bit of a goal, even though they're taught not to have a goal, of what they want it to look like. And then they, there's this other activity that's trying to suppress that. Yeah. To be a certain way. Like I used to find that sometimes in the Buddhist group, they were angry people, and they were using meditation to stop themselves being angry. <laughs> and rather than yeah. just anger's part of it, and if anger's got to come up, that's the divine expression. Um, yeah. there's a little bit of an echo. I don't suppose you've got headphones or oh no, they have stopped now. Did it stop? Yeah. Yeah, I was looking for my headphones and couldn't find them. And and I often found in the meditation group they often didn't question as well who was doing the meditation. Was it actually them doing it? That they took pride that they were doing it and that they were better off than other people, but who was actually doing the meditation? It's just a happening. Yeah. Just uh, like if the anger happens, the anger happens. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, I'm, I do feel lucky that I came across teachings of Ramana Maharshi and Nizagardata. Are you familiar with Nizagardata? Yeah, 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 sure. Because they definitely make it, you know, uh, a point to point out who is meditating and who are you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I do tend to teach, like I mentioned, I, you know, I'm a meditation teacher, so I do tend to teach in that style. Yeah. But yeah. Um, if definitely you've... Still- <laughs> But if you've got any ideas, oh, there's just a little bit of echo. I don't suppose you've got some headphones nearby. No, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, I don't. Um, that's okay. That's okay. Um, I just have to to uh, get used to my little voice coming back. But it's okay. I can still do it. Um, is the other thing, if you've got any ideas that you should or shouldn't be teaching meditation, the question is, is who is teaching meditation as well? It's never been your doing. You've never taught meditation. It's just that body-mind mechanism's expression happening. Yeah. Like if you've got any ideas of right or wrong, I often meet therapists that come and say, but how can I be a therapist now? You were never the therapist in the first place. You might find the meditation changes in some ways, but it's never you doing it. And the idea that you've got to get this right or that you've got to liberate people or that it's your job to free anyone is all ideas. Yeah, and I, 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 I'm I, starting to kind of come into that more recently, for sure, seeing that it's just all happening. And, it's just happening. And any time I, I do myself getting kind of anxious or worried is when I find me trying to figure out, well, where is this going and what am I really teaching? Yeah. And it keeps changing all the time. Yeah. And I'm, I'm wanting to somehow, and because I am uh, financially dependent on this, there's a desire to structure yeah. it. Yeah. And what is my teaching? I don't understand. And it keeps changing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, That's how I first and, started doing this. Was I was, I, I was teaching some people meditation like uh, I don't know if you've ever heard Meta Bhavna and mindfulness and I knew it was all bullshit but that's what they wanted and they were paying me money for it and then just by accident I just kind of slipped into talking about non people started listening <laughs> wow yeah it was um yeah, it was but, but the the first that was next door to me was a retreat center and they did. They weren't interested in non-duality. They wanted something like meditation, or I also did massage. So I'd do breathing with people. Mm-hmm. And then from that, people started asking questions, and I started giving non-dual answers, or it just came out, and they liked it. So when you were teaching, were you not quite fully? And I don't know what you like to. Prepare refer to it we'll call it awake um yeah I totally. I, i've been I, listening for the last hour and i heard you say something you know kind of going back and forth yeah i relate but i feel like that's kind of where i'm at right now is just kind of this feeling really peaceful and really letting go and i don't know if there is ever a place of fully awake but um back then the, there was definitely like uh when i first started speaking there was if there was me appearing, it was very difficult to see it because there was very, most of the time there was nobody there, so there was nobody looking at that. But um, but maybe there was still, maybe there is still now, but you wouldn't be able to notice it. You wouldn't even be able to notice that you're liberated. You're just, in, you're just doing what's happening and there's no longer somebody removed from it. But you couldn't tell that because who would tell that? But I'm I, I'm not I don't have the idea that I've got to fully awake because that would just be an idea. But I certainly don't notice like days of of being in agony and accusing people of all their doing all these things or anything like that. But if there's little bits of stories coming up, I don't notice it if there are because there's nobody there to notice it. Like who would know where they are? But when I was teaching meditation, I was full out lying to people and knowing and like knowing it, but not me lying, but I was teaching them to to relax. Like I wasn't teaching them what I'm teaching now, but I just knew that I was just teaching them to relax. But I wasn't talking about freedom. I was just teaching them to relax in the flow of things, just like if you're teaching someone to eat healthily. 
That was. Yeah, it almost seems like as soon as you say anything out loud, it doesn't feel like truth anymore. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, as soon as you say, you're always <laughs> contradicting yourself. But in the meditation classes, that's. But I didn't do very many. I did like about ten or fifteen before it slipped into non-duality. <laughs> I just it just yeah. kind of came out, like I, just kind of when people started to really question me about things. And would you experience when somebody would have a strong reaction about something that you said? Would you experience a contraction? Because I'm finding that that's a difficulty for me, is a fear of really speaking openly or just from a more expansive place out of the fear that mm. when I say something, people are going to just freak out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I certainly don't talk about this on the streets with people. I only talk about it when it's asked, like I wouldn't go and preach it to anyone on the streets. Um, yeah. I don't notice fear as such about saying it to people. Sometimes it's painful because it's sad destroying people's illusions. Like it's, it's sometimes a painful energetic exchange with people. And you feel the pain? Too. I wouldn't say I feel it, but it's like it's like if you're in an aeroplane and it's being really bumpy and there's fear arising. But it wouldn't say that I experience it. It's just happening in this. But I don't ex I don't experience this sensation of it could or should be any other way. But sometimes I meet people. You know, I've spoken about this recently that are suicidal, and I would much rather be eating chocolate cake. <laughs> to be honest, but that's what's happening. And if the body mind mechanism is talking to someone that's really in agony, then and and sometimes I meet people that really hate me and what I say, and they phone up when I'm or they phone up these talks or they phone up and they really are angry with me and it's more pleasurable to be talking to somebody else, but that's what's happening and the body doesn't say go away; it just carries on speaking with them. It's just pain. So you, but you do feel it. I understand you're saying there's. But I don't. I don't feel it as in like who feels like, it. It's just in like the space. It's in the. It's no <laughs> difference from the wall or from the room. But are you asking me this, and because you're wanting me to say that it's okay to feel pain, because it's so okay for whatever arises. Whatever arises. You don't need to be anything. That was always the lie that you had to be something. Yeah, I yeah I like to say that because I think that there is still something in me clinging to that it should feel more easy. Yeah. That it should yeah. be. But all those ideas are what blocks it, not the not what's actually happening. It's the yeah. idea that it should be another way. It's so whatever is appearing is what's appearing, and you've never got it wrong. You didn't even exist. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And we don't uh, know what's happening in these en in these conversations with people. There's so many energies flying. Sometimes I find I speak to certain body mind mechanisms, and afterwards I fall asleep. I don't know why. <laughs> That's just what happens. So there's just no arguing for you with anything happens. Everything's just allowed. I wouldn't say there's no arguing. There's just an absence of something that was there before. So I always bring it back to there was just something there before that had an idea about its life and what its life should look like. And then it seemed to get deconstructed. It was all, it was all about deconstruction. It was never about getting to a certain place or a specific place. I just lost everything. Just and now it's just appearing, and if there's pain appearing, there's pain appearing. Isn't that funny how to some people like me hearing you say that right now sounds very, it's a very attractive idea. Yeah, <laughs> but for some people, it's such an unattractive yeah, idea. Yeah, like talk about bliss, Lisa. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just to just just to be okay with what's happening. That was all that was ever wanted. But we go through this waking up process and at first we start with arrogance of like it's going to be blissful or permanent bliss and then that all begins to get crushed and then at the end of the day we're like okay we're happy with what's just appearing.
Okay, we'll be happy with whatever appears. We get crumbled down to any expectation of what we thought it should be. Which sounds so a negative to the mind which has lived in this hope of achieving its goals and getting somewhere. But it was always that that was the barrier, never, your nature is free. It was always the positive ideas that were a problem. You were, as a baby, it was just freedom. The dog is just free. Yeah. It's just what we think about ourselves, and there's nobody there. It's been a false dream. There's just descriptions of the body mind. Yes, we do. So it kind of makes out that it seems, you know, and I'm sure for different people it's different paths, but yeah. for me it's been an yeah. extremely, like, philosophical path. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I guess there's a part of me that's confused as to why is it not easier to get to this place? Why, you know, but again, I think for somebody else it might be through farming and they might yeah. find yeah. it that way, but for me it's been... A lot of reading, a lot of studying, a lot of, um, a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason it's not easy is because it's talking about the death of you. Like it's not that it's like um, like the one that thought that it needed to get somewhere. That's what dies. Yeah, and it's very, very scary. I, I like I said, I had my first experience of that just a couple months ago and it was great while it was happening but then the next morning it was like my ego woke up with a vengeance yeah yeah because um, it just felt so meaningless yeah. all of it and, yeah. and it really time, is meaningless it really is but it's very scary to somebody that lives in time the absolute yeah. emptiness yeah. of it all Yeah, and I like she's saying, you know, that it's not about love and all of that, because that's, that's a deep desire of wanting to get to this place where it is just bliss and love and yeah, yeah. being a good person. But it's just the emptiness of something that was a lie in the first place. And you could call that love, but even calling it love makes it... Love. Makes it have purpose in a way. Makes it have purpose. And I do call it love sometimes, but it does make it have purpose. Yeah. Hmm. I've got a little echo. You might not be able to hear it, but everyone else can. <laughs> do you find it um, beneficial to just sit with silence when you do meet with them now and teach? I don't know. I have no way. Whatever happens. Yeah, I have no yeah, way. I don't know. I do find that silence happens quite quickly because I don't get loads of people to my talks and the questions run out quite quickly. That's great. Well, Lisa, I'm so glad you're out there and talking about this. I know. Um, <laughs> well, this is a very nice speaking with you, Anne. Anytime you want to call back, call back. I do these twice yeah, a week. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, twice a week on um, Sundays at 5 p.m. Um, British time and um, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. British time. I have no idea the times in America. Um, I think you're... Whereabouts in America are you? I'm in Pennsylvania. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So like New York City time. I think it's maybe six or seven hours now, but it... It's, it's almost 4 p.m. here right okay. now. Okay, 4, 5, what 6, 7. It's, uh, in England, it's 8.52. Oh, okay. I'm yes, not actually in England at the moment, just to make it more confusing, but... Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the time in England. So, yeah, and then um, sometimes I'm on Skype, but I've been traveling a lot lately, so not very often, and I always welcome people to call in whenever I'm online. So you teach. Sorry. Sorry. So you te you teach full time. Yeah, that's my only job yeah. at the moment. That's, that's great. 
Yeah, it's really, it's really nice. But I don't work full time. I'm, I, uh, I, I do really intensive, and then a couple of weeks off, and then really intensive. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, Anne. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye. Nice. Gad. Bonsoir. Bonsoir, Gad. It seems that spiritual experience of flip flow occurring more intensely and frequently happens before realization. In my case, it doesn't actually. Does it mean I am far that? it happens to this body mind do I have to worry if it doesn't happen to me does it mean I'm very very bad seeker <laughs> no everything that is born dies so the me will die when is an irrelevant question how is an irrelevant question too believe it or not thank you for adding me this is awesome my pleasure pal hi Mark Does listening to satsang help the ego energy collapse? I don't know. <coughs> Funny, eh? I don't know. Uh, the kind of question implies that there's something separate. There's one big flow happening and the assumption is that you're listening to this now, Marcus. And that you chose to listen to me. Whereas it's really just the happening. Just the happening. And it's not separate from anything that's ever happened and anything that's going to happen, which is nothing. Would be so much fun if you'd speak Dutch soon. Hi, <laughs> Karen. Yeah, <laughs> that might not happen. Hi Lisa, love you. Hi Michael, love you. Lisa, Lisa, what do you like to do in your free time? Uh, I quite like walking, but I like lots of different things. The crumbling you talk about is what I experience. If it is life happening without meaning, I don't mean in a negative way. All sorts of emotions are passing by. It's like losing sense of direction. Yeah. This is it. God knows what this is. Hey Lisa, you still on Ustream? Hi, Cloud. Okay, so um, I think I'm going to finish now, but I haven't done any of my questions in my email box. So sorry, guys, if you're waiting for um, me to answer your question all evening. Let's just have a look and see. Hello? Hi, Julian. 
Hey, Elisa, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Um, that's so funny because you were calling at the same time as another guy. Can I just put you on the same call? One second. Yeah, for sure. I'll just call you back. Hi, Marcos. Hello. Hi, yeah. Good evening. Good um, evening. I have a question about the words that people use to in vain describe being awake. People often use the word bliss or love. Yeah. You're yeah, falling yeah. in love with things. Hey, Julian, I'm just I'm hey. answering Marcus's question. I'll speak with you in a second, okay? Okay. Okay, carry on, Marcus. Um, but I think that when a person hears a word like being awake is bliss, um, in my mind, when I hear the word bliss, I think of pleasure. Um, falling in love, it's like an experience. It's something that begins and ends. And when you talk about being aware, about being enlightened, or being the self or whatever, it's something that doesn't begin or end. So, do you think that... Do I say that? Um, no, I'm not talking about you specifically. Okay. Although you have used, you know, words like love at times. Yeah. But I'm talking about non-duality in general. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like, um... There's something very tricky that happens when a teacher says that... The now is pure bliss or pure consciousness, or something like that. Mm. It makes it makes being awake sound like a state, but it's not a state. And it's like, uh, well, if you're trying to teach, but you keep saying, it, and basically you feel like there's this problem between what teachers say and what the reality is, and uh, it's hard to imagine how to br bridge that gap. Yeah. It's not your doing, so you don't need to worry about it. You never did anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have a question about not doing things. Yeah. Doesn't not doing things also count as a kind of action? Yeah. But I, di I didn't um, say that. I said, um, it's not your doing. Doing yes, happens. it's not my doing. Yeah. Yes, it's the apparent person's doing. Yeah. And the apparent person is always going to do something, yeah. whether it's listening or not listening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all of this is one big explosion of energy, and this moment right now is not separate from everything that's ever happened, including the Big Bang, the dinosaurs, um, your mother giving birth, what everything that's ever happened, which is nothing, nothing's ever happened. So this this isn't separate from anything. So there's no individual act or words or teaching or understanding that's going to give you this. This is just one momentum of energy. So when the me is designed to fall away, it will fall away. And you didn't ask to listen to these talks. You don't even exist. There is just these talks appearing now in this creativity. And the, they'll be drinking or, or drinking tea after this or whatever happens after this. And none of it's separate. There's no events which are going to awake you. There's just a momentum of energy playing it out. Okay, so you say I don't exist. Yeah. So I guess you would not agree with a statement like I am the self or I am non-dual awareness, you wouldn't agree with that? I wouldn't phrase it like that. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't phrase it that way? No, but sometimes I think what people mean is, I'll sometimes say, I, that all there is is I am, but it doesn't mean an I as in a person, I am as in like amness, beingness, aliveness. I think for me I prefer to use the word awareness just because you have to use some kind of word when you're talking with people. And recently I think of awareness kind of like I kind of think of awareness as the fact that objects exist 
and then these objects um, appear within or on top of what I am, apparently. Yeah, I wouldn't say that, but that's your expression of it. My expression of it. I think you would say it like, um, vision happens, a feeling happens. Is that how you would say it? Yeah, I wouldn't. Imp I wouldn't say. Although, I mean, who cares? But I wouldn't. I wouldn't um, separate out the objects from the awareness. But it doesn't matter. All words, just blah blah blah. Uh, does time exist? Um, it only exists in communication when it's appearing. But no, it's not a reality. All communication was never a reality, it was just communication. Mm -hmm. Do thoughts exist? That's a tricky one, isn't it? <laughs> That's like asking, um, is, does the dream at night exist? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm asking. What well, I'm asking you, I'm asking, but my, I'm asking oh, you yes, the question. Me? Oh, you, you threw it back at me. Yeah. <laughs> um, right now, <laughs> the way it is in my direct experience, uh, everything is consciousness, but then for some unknown reason, interpretations appear, and thoughts are that interpretation. But when you really inquire into it, you, re you realize that there's not a separation between the interpretation and consciousness. That's how I say it. So yeah. in a sense, so it depends on the level that you're looking at. But ultimately, no, because it's just the one thing. Yeah. Um. So I would most probably say, I would say I don't know. <laughs> yes, okay, but I appreciate, um, you know, your use streams and everything very much. Thank you for it. Ah, it's okay. That's what happens. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, and I guess I've had one more thought. Yeah. About how you say that. You, you don't know things. And I think it's really good that you say that you don't know things instead of just making up bullshit. Yeah. I could say uh, I, I don't... I, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Carry on. <laughs> so, the thought I'm having is about truth. Yeah. Um, so, when you think that something is true, that's a thought. Yeah. But there's no way that you can know a thought is true. So when No, because that, that would just be another thought. It's really yes, amazing. Yes, another thought. The question is, is this consciousness a thought? Um, well, no, I'd say that, well, well, consciousness is a word, and a word is definitely a thought. But how do you know consciousness? Oh, <laughs> um, it's my direct experience. Is it? <laughs> yes, it I'm is. Not, I'm not asking you to answer these questions, like, now, mm -hmm. you don't have to. Well, I'm just, it's not I'm just my putting direct it back. experience, I would say that it's what I am. Well, and, and is there anybody, that, is, there, is there ever a direct experience? Is this ever possible, what you're talking about? That oh, you well, have a direct experience? I would say that, ultimately, when there's no thoughts and there's no time, there's no, there's only this one thing, and when you can't compare it to anything else, then it can't be described. So it can't be consciousness. That's right, yeah. Consciousness is ultimately just a word. Mm. Ultimately, it can't be described, what I am. Consciousness is the best you can do, like love or bliss or whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's a funny old thing. We just get left with lots of I don't knows. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what makes it so fun. Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> It's really funky, though. I mean, the mind just gets more and more stumped. It's like, huh, huh. <laughs> it's fun. 
Um, okay, I think that's about it for me. Thank Thanks, you very much. Thanks, Marcus, for calling. <laughs> Whoops. Thank you. Bye. Hi, Julian. Hey, uh, what's up? Are you, Did, are, you in, are you in the UK right now? No, I'm in Holland. Oh, okay. I'm in Holland. How's, how are the talks going? Very nicely, yes. Cool, cool. <laughs> um, I think I, I was just calling in to listen in because I'm like, I don't ever have any questions anymore, but I guess I just wanted to share something. Just like what I've, from what I've experienced. Um, it was more so about like truth. Yeah. And like kind of recognizing that it's like we all go through um, conditioning and whatever it is we learn. There are 7 billion people who are just learning different things and it's like you can tell that there's this evident conflict when when two people are, are expressing what they believe their truths to be. Yeah. And then, and then there's kind of a questioning of like, at least over here there's always been like a questioning about whether or not what I thought was true. Because from my own personal experience, it, it's what I had grown up with. But then you encounter other people who have different experiences, and it's like you kind of question whether or not what you know is actually true. And then it kind of, for, for me at least, it got really frustrating at some point because it's like you're constantly encountering this conflict of, what, of questioning whether or not what you believed and learned to be true or not, to be mm -hmm. like this ultimate truth. And then it's like it gets so, I guess that's what you could call the suffering, of believing that what you think is true and what the other person thinks is, is not true. Yeah. Um, and it already doesn't matter. Yeah. You're never going to get to, it's so funny because you're never going to get to a point of, ah, we've established what's true. <laughs> and even when you're talking about non-duality, it's the same thing. Yeah. It's just like, it's like, okay, you might be pointing to, to what's actually happened, but even in that description, it's still a story. And someone else could interpret it differently, which is where you might see the conflict, but it's completely pointless because it's just, it's just a description. It's not. Yeah, really... it's completely, completely rubbish. And then it's so funny when you get a really fiery character because <laughs> I have, I have just no belief in what I'm saying really it's yeah. just like blah blah coming out and then when you're with a fiery character it's funny watching the body be fiery back because it really doesn't <laughs> believe anything it's saying <laughs> yeah it's and that's like I think that's probably pro or for me at least I can't say this and that's another thing is that it also feels true but it's not true it just feels true for you but um it's like it's kind of a joke after when you recognize that what you say isn't true you can I mean, it's like a play. Like you can literally say whatever you want, and someone else might take it seriously. But you could just—I was uh, listening to this uh, something Byron Katie used to say. She used to say, "There's your business, then there's God's business, and then there's um, like other people's business." And typically, you suffer when you're in other people's business or in God's business, which is just like reality. And um, basically, she's just pointing back to the fact that your thoughts aren't necessarily true, but they're the only thing that you have to work with in order to, like, interact with the world and do whatever it is you do on a daily basis. And when you're preoccupied with, um, with being in someone else's business of what they should or shouldn't be doing, you suffer. Or, or when you're, like, arguing against reality, you suffer. Like, if it's raining or whatever, instead of just being preoccupied with whatever it is that's going on with you, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. But I wouldn't say that you have any choice about what happens. Yeah, it's not yeah, somebody in sure. their choosing, but I but get the like, sentiment of it. <laughs> it's like even your thoughts, so like you can't, it's like there's an embracing of the thoughts now because the denying of the thoughts is the belief that the thoughts aren't it or the, the belief that life isn't in the thoughts, but it's in everything. It's including the thoughts as yeah. well. Because, uh, I mean, I feel like people give um, thoughts a bad rep a bad reputation because they they believe that thoughts are the suffering. Yeah. But yeah, I just thought that was interesting to to know that you're um. It's like everyone seven billion people are like arguing about what truth is. It's like no, I've experienced this. This is right, and you're wrong. And it's just like no, we're actually both wrong. And it's not even that what you believe. It. I guess you could say what you say 
or what you think is right in a sense that it's happening. So yeah. it's in that sense it's right, but it's not the same kind of right. Like this is true. It's not true. It's just what's happening. So it's right in that sense. Yeah. But yeah, I just thought that was interesting. Um, but yeah, no, sorry. I just wanted to, I just wanted to listen in on the conversation. I didn't really have anything, any questions. Well, I'm just about to end. <laughs> Oh, okay, I've been going cool. for about two hours, so I was just finishing it. I was just wrapping up. Cool beans. <laughs> so you be still. <laughs> we'll, we'll take care, Lisa. Thanks, Julian. Bye. Bye. So, thanks, guys. Um, just as a bit of an advertisement, next weekend, this weekend coming, uh, I've got a talk in Holland. In... What's it called? Doomstrel or something. Drumstrel in Holland. The name is hard for me. Drum, Drumel, Drumel, Netherlands. Um, and then the weekend after that, I'm in Vienna, Austria. And then in Greece. So please check out my website and events. And if you want to get updated on my events, you can do that by subscribing to my blog. And then I do this every Wednesday and Sunday. Uh, Wednesday 7 p.m. BST British summer time and Sunday 5 p.m. British summer time but this weekend I have to um, change the talk from uh, Sunday to Saturday so I'll put that on my website so it'll be on Saturday instead of Sunday and it might be an earlier time but I'll let you guys know so please check my website before the weekend okay thanks guys lots of love bye